and get some cherry shrimp in there soon, I think, and start breeding cherry shrimp. But as you can see, absolutely gin clear. Hi everyone, George here. Welcome to a, another vlog. Just a very quick one. I wanted to give you an update, particularly on the Scaper Line 60 that was set up almost four weeks ago. And I wanted to give you this update now because I'm going to Tropica in Denmark for a week and I'm a little bit worried how it's going to look like when I get back without any care and attention. I do have some confidence it's going to be okay. I was away last week as well. Um, and as you can see, it isn't looking too bad. Lots of healthy new growth in all of the plants. Uh, for those that watched the last vlog I did updating these tanks, I did take out the Gratiola viscadula, which was melting, and replaced it with Cryptocoryne awendetii green in the Tropica 1 2 grow. So it's very small at the moment, although it has doubled in size in the last week or so. Uh, all the other plants are looking great, I think. I really like this view here from the side. It's just one piece of wood, believe it or not. Absolutely magnificent specimen uh, donated by Aquarium Gardens. In fact, Aquarium, Garden, Aquarium Gardens actually supplied all of the plants as well, all Tropica, mostly one to grow. The only potted, regular kind of potted plant was the Schismatoglottis praetoi here and the Bucophalandra red. Get some close-ups of those. Got a little bit of diatoms there on the wood. You can see that kind of dark brown area here. Uh, the moss is growing well. There is some kind of weird, um, I don't know if it's like algae or just biofilm building up on the moss. Do it, I could do a really harsh trim back and that'll grow back really nice and compact. I don't really often use moss in scapes, but I thought I'd give it a go in here and it seems to be doing really well. Uh, I used the ADA cotton thread, uh, moss thread I think it's called, and it actually, it's really good. You kind of tie it around really tight and then it actually um, decomposes and it, you just sort of remove it and then it, the moss is actually really nicely stuck to the wood there. So really happy with that. Stem plants are looking great. Let's go from the top. We've got the Myriophyllum Matograsensa there. Very, very fast grower. So much surface area in those needle leaves, which are great for removing nutrients and therefore helping to prevent algae. And then we have the smaller Myriophyllum Guyana there on the left. I really like the way the, the feathery textures complement each other. And as I said before, I just love that, that view from here. It just looks so lush. We've got the ranunculus here, not very often used in nature aquarium scapes. Quite a unique leaf form, as you can see. It reminds me of palm trees. And then the, pleased to see that the Marcellaire Hesuta is carpeting really quite nicely. Interestingly, some of the leaves have remained in their kind of four leaf clover formation. That's normally um, the emergent growth leaf form, but it's, um, it's staying like that and it's not dying off. So I quite like that, quite like the way it, it blends in with the round texture, just adds a little extra bit of interest, doesn't it? Got the Echinodorus rini here. Uh, not so red at the moment. The lighting isn't that powerful. This is a Wio Slim. I think it's about 40 watts. So it's not super powerful. This is the Chihiros uh, WRGB2, which is actually 70 watts or so. So it's almost twice as powerful. And um, we'll talk about this scape in a minute, or what will be this scape. Um, what else do we have in here? We've got the crypts in the foreground here, the midground. This is Cryptocoryne myoya. So it's going to be interesting to see how that grows in the longer term. But yeah, overall, really happy with the progress. Four weeks old, not growing too quickly, uh, very, fairly low maintenance. I've only done probably three or four water changes in it in the, in the, in the four weeks. Normally I do a lot more, but I have been away from home quite a lot lately. Um, I think one of the reasons for success with no real algae issues so far is that I'm using, I'm actually using two field filters. So this one here was originally used on the Gobi scape. So that's mature media. And then we have another filter in here, which also I uh, transplanted some mature media over from the Highline 400. So mature media, brand new soil, um, so any ammonia spikes are dealt with by the filters and I think that gives a really great start up. 
So yeah, these are both the Biomaster, uh, I think they're 350s or the 600s, I can't actually tell. I think they're, they're 350s, yeah. And I've got the 850s on the uh, Highline 400. Um, and interestingly, I was gonna show you this as well. I've recently cleaned the internal compartments of this filter in here. This is another 850. Let me just turn these lights on. So I actually um, did a deep clean of this filter for the first time since I've set it up, this filter. So it's over two years since I've cleaned the internals. And the only real kind of thing that needed cleaning was the top sponge, which is really fascinating. So just shows how great these pre-filters are in these Biomasters. And then what I did do, whilst, the, um, whilst I had the filter out and about, I did fill it up with some, some of this, Fritz Max Out Pro. So this is a, in fact, I used two different types. In fact, I used three, three portions altogether. So this is a chemical media. It's a combination of different medias, I believe, to uh, reduce nitrates, phosphates, and there's, I think there's carbon in there as well. Uh, it comes in a bag, like a net bag, with the different mixtures of the chemical media in there. And I put those in the top uh, spun, uh, the top kind of basket in the, in the Biomaster underneath mm -hmm. the very, very top fine sponge filter. And I'm really impressed with the water clarity. It's really, you can see, this is a room divider tank, of course, for those that don't know. This is the Awaze Highline 300. And I uh, did a water change yesterday, no, two days ago, in fact. Um, but when I, I, I changed the media, I put the media in there a few, a few days ago. And by now I would normally see a slight yellowing of the water because there's so much fish there's so many fish in here i do feed them really well every day and this creates a kind of gradual build up of uh, just like a, a yellowy browny stain if you like very very subtle but as you can see absolutely gin clear you can see right the way through that aquarium perfectly and the fish are just looking magnificent Absolutely love these. I just need to let Betty back in. <laughs> that a good girl. So yeah, really happy uh, with the Highline 300. I do need to offload some of the fish. It is getting very, very heavily stocked now, um, but really happy with this. Anyway, back to the uh, Scope Line 60, bit of a digression there. Um, yeah, lights are only on for six hours a day at the moment. Uh, just wanting to kind of manage any potential algae growth that you tend to get in early scapes, uh, at the early stages of a scape's life. There's no requirement to grow the plant super fast. I've got no, um, got, there's no rush. I don't like to rush things these days. Uh, I think patience is a very good skill to learn as an aquascaper. Um, so yeah, no rush, just watching the plants grow nice and steady. The stem plants will probably need trimming when I do get back from Tropica, so it's Monday today. I'll get back on Friday and I'll probably do some maintenance at the weekend. And then the following week, I will be doing a full video with Awaze UK and we're going to talk in some detail about their new uh, Scaper line um, consumable range. So we've got the two liquid fertilizers here. We've got a daily fertilizer and a weekly one here. And then we've got some root tabs and obviously the scaper soil. So I'm using this system in here at the moment, although I haven't added any root tabs yet. Um, probably will do around the, around the crypts and the um, Echinodorus there. They really, really like to be fed through their roots. So that's exciting. There was a UK coming next week, and I'm actually going to be scaping this soon. This is going to be an Iwagumi, already chosen the rocks uh, from Aquarium Gardens. And then the plants, this is interesting. These have been in here for probably four or five weeks now. Still really healthy. Um, you can see that's actually red. It's not brown, it's not dying. That is actually red there on the Drunkus Repens because of the highlight here. Um, 
So yeah, that's the plants I'm going to use. I have talked about these in some detail, these plants in the last vlog. They're just a mixture of kind of um, grassy plants, different kind of heights, and just create a very thematic grassy, um, quite a dense, um, lush irigumi suitable for a variety of fish. So in my opinion, a lot of minimalist irigumis aren't necessarily uh, so comfortable for the fish with the open space, etc. Depends on what species, obviously. Um, the Highline 400 is looking amazing. The Anubius is just outstanding. I'm so happy with it. I actually removed a big portion from here, split it up, and I've actually started to put more around the substrate line here. I just think it looks really effective. And the, the gobies are, are doing well in there. Moved them in there a week or so ago. So yeah, really, really happy with the overall progress in the gallery. Really excited to set this one up uh, next week or so. And obviously keep giving you updates of this beautiful Scope Line 60. I'm gonna get some cherry shrimp in there soon, I think, and start breeding cherry shrimp. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you on the next one. Cheerio.